Today's topic and fourth part of the longevity jigsaw is exercise. Physical activity is defined as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that require energy expenditure. Investigations of ancient societies still intact today confirm that physical capability was not just a grim necessity for success at gathering food and providing shelter and safety, but it was enjoyed throughout everyday prehistoric life as a vital part of a religious, social and cultural expression. Food supplies for the most part were plentiful, allowing ample time for both rest and recreational physical activities. In ancient China, as early as 3000 to 1000 BC, the classic Yellow Emperor's Book of Internal Medicine first described the principle that human harmony with the world was the key to prevention and that prevention was the key to long life. These principles grew up into concepts that became central to the 6th century Chinese philosophy Taoism, where longevity through simple living attained the status of a philosophy that has guided Chinese culture through the present day. In India, the Ayurveda, a collection of health and medical concepts verbally transmitted as early as 3000 BC, developed into yoga, a philosophy that included a comprehensively elaborated series of stretching and flexibility postures. These principles known as Yoga Sutras by Patanjali, sometimes between 200 BC and 200 AD. In both India and China, during this period, the linking of exercise and health may have led to the development of a medical subspecialty that today would find its equivalent in sports medicine. In Africa, systems of flexibility, agility and endurance training not only represented the essence of martial arts capability, but also served as an integral component of religious, ritual and daily life. The Samberu and the Maasai of Kenya still feature running as a virtue of the greatest ability, linked to manhood and social stature. Similarly, in American Indian cultures, Running was a prominent feature of all major aspects of life. Long before the European invaded, Indians ran to communicate, to fight, and to hunt. American Indian people developed the precursor of modern day lacrosse. Even today, the Tarahumara of northern Mexico play a version of kickball that involves entire villages for days at a time. Regular physical activity provides a range of physical and mental health benefits. These include reducing the risk of disease, managing existing conditions, and developing and maintaining physical and mental function. Global evidence has shown that boys are more active than girls at all ages and that physical activity levels decline through childhood and adolescence. Sedentary behavior is not simply the absence of moderate or vigorous physical activity. It includes behaviors such as watching TV, reading, working with the computer, sitting while playing video games, or traveling into a motor vehicle. For young people, evidence suggests that high levels of sedentary behavior are weakly associated with greater level of obesity and lower physical fitness. So what is the evidence? Evidence of bone health, cognitive and muscle fitness and good weight management in children is present. It also helps with children's mental health issues like depression. It helps keep the mental and physical health issues at bay in adults. For example, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, some forms of cancer, stroke and uh, heart disease, anxiety, depression and dementia. It also helps with good weight management, sleep and cognitive function. In older adults, we know physical function and frailty are major challenges of old age. Falls in the old age can be fatal. It helps with all these issues in the old age. So how much physical activity do we need to do? For 5 to 18 years old, on average 60 minutes per day across the week. On average means it doesn't have to be strictly 60 minutes every day, but 420 minutes in 7 days. It can be divided in different patterns and spread throughout the day. Which activities count towards this? Play, 
swim, run, rope skipping, sports, uh, physical education or PE in schools, uh, bike riding and walking to school, etc. For adults, that is 19 to 64 years of age, this group is divided into two subgroups, healthy adults, including disabled adults and pregnant women. For healthy adults and disabled adults, minimum 150 minutes moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes intensity exercise. That is high in, in, uh, 75 minutes of high intensity ex exercise or combination of both. Activities that count towards moderate in intensity are cycle, brisk walk, and swimming. Activities that count towards high intensity are running, climbing stairs, and playing sports. To build bone, muscle, and joint strength, it is recommended to do yoga, carry heavy bags, and do gym exercises for at least two times a week. Disabled adults can alter the method or pattern depending upon their physical strength and ability to perform physical activities. For pregnant women, minimum physical activity and inactive lifestyle is favorable for the pregnant women in some cultures and societies. But scientific evidence suggests that pregnant women needs to be active for mental and physical health benefits. It is recommended to perform 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity every week. Activities like household work, walking, low impact sports, etc. Low impact sports uh, puts less pressure on the muscles and joints of the body. Finally, for the older adults, in this group, we have to divide it in three subgroups. One is healthy older adults. Second is healthy older adults who have been very active throughout their life. And the third is frail older adults or seriously ill older adults. For healthy older adults, it is recommended to perform 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity. For those who have better physical strength, should perform 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity. The adults who have been active throughout their life and are not uh, combating any serious illness that prevents them to perform high intensity physical activity can perform high intensity activities like playing sports, running, jumping, etc. But with caution, Tai Chi is considered useful for these adults too. For third group, frail older adults and those who suffer from diseases like dementia, arthritis or in um, advanced old age. For them, it is recommended to focus on the reduction of inactive time by introducing light activities with high frequency and volume. It is recommended that people are active every day. Spreading activity across the day or week can help make the guidelines achievable within daily living. Despite the widely reported benefits of physical activity, most adults and many children are insufficiently active to meet the full set of recommendations. I hope these guidelines help everyone to become more active. The good news is that even small changes can make big difference over time. Remember, some is good, but more is better. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please like, share and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below to let me know what do you think of this video. Thank you.